Every canvas I start, it's that trembling always, that unknown territory. The Penning Fall was born about 10 years ago uh, in software form and about 8 years ago as a real entity. It's about getting computers to either enhance human creativity, um, analyse creativity just as a, as a philosophical concept, or um, simulate creativity on its own. Computer generated art, people seem to think that it's down two axes. It's pretty, pretty, fractal, abstract, decorative art or it's Photoshop style, start from a photo and render it in a painterly looking way as if Monet might have done it or Jackson Pollock or something. Um, and I, the, the painting we produced was of figurative, it had 17 people dancing um, and, but they weren't from real photographs. These were generated by a context-free design grammar and it highlighted the fact that even though it's not abstract, it's also not from photographs. I wanted to get across a new painting style which is very fluid. Um, the software paints a whole scene in one go, one line, um, and that's based on a classic bit of computer science called the travelling salesman problem. A salesman has to go to various towns without going back, what's the shortest route? Um, if you think of every paint region to be painted, um, you only want to do it once, um, so you've got the same kind of problem. So I, I implemented the world's simplest solution to the travelling salesman problem, which is go to the nearest town which you haven't been to before. It, um, but then when the software painted it, of course, often the, the, the town which is furthest away, um, completely the opposite end of the picture. And so um, it, you get these extremely dynamic brush strokes, which I've got no idea where they're going to come from. Um, and it surprised me that A, they happened at all, and B, they added a lot of dynamism, dynamism to, this, um, to this painting, because it was dancers after all. So this, this is a gigantic sweep. Um, that was because that travelling salesman from town was the next that this one hadn't been to, so you get this big swoop. And, and the, the dynamic aspect of this, that really came as a surprise to me. I, I just, and so I thought, well, I'm not going to implement a better algorithm because you won't get these swoops mm. anymore. Um, and, and as a result, that, um, that came out. It took um, 24 hours to produce this, this, this picture. Uh, I have this on my wall at home. With, it's three metres by one metre and it's a billion pixels. Deconstruction basically essentially a creative thing. Yes. And it has to come from one's own um, analysis. And it has certain goal. And it again comes from the very experience of life. To get software to be taken seriously as being creative, the very least it needs to have is some skill, some appreciation, and some imagination. We have little projects where we could possibly say that that's true. We got people to sit in front of a video camera and express an emotion. Then the painting pool took over. It took the apex image to draw a portrait from. It um, used the eyes, nose and mouth to pick out a likeness. It painted them in more fine detail, just like a, a, a human artist might do. And then it used the emotion to dictate the style. So if they were happy, it painted them like clowns. Ridiculous bright primary colours slapdash acrylic paint simulations. Um, if they were frowning, it would um, use muted colours, charcoals, pastels. Right. But there is some kind of a, a, a exchange between the feeling and what they are doing. And from that, we grow to connect. And for computer, it doesn't connect, it produces. And there is the remoteness that to create, to one has to have a freedom, a spirit of freedom, of whether it is free essential. We cannot create unless we are free. Because computers, by their nature, they execute, the, they execute code that they're given. Um, and Simon wrote the code for the painting pool. So if it produces something, some people claim that that's because Simon wrote it to produce that thing. Now, there are various ways of thinking about that because obviously that piece of software has a lot of randomness in it, it has a lot of learning in it, it's solving problems itself. But one really interesting way that we can counteract these criticisms is we can have software write parts of its own code so that it's, it's no longer just executing the code that we wrote for it.
to me that's the most exciting possible outcome of this, of software writing software, is this idea that we are no longer the only people contributing to these um, competition and creative systems. I like um, Duchamp and other people's line that if I say it's art, it's art. If it's put out there for artistic inspection, whatever it is, if it's just a thought process or a urinal, uh, it is art. Um, so there's not meant to be an answer to the question, what is art? There's not meant to be an answer to the question, what is creativity? Um, and as such, it's a moving target, which we don't often get in, uh, in scientific areas. Um, so that's why I love pursuing it with scientific vigour. We'll know we've got success if I die and the software carries on producing interesting and thought-provoking and admired pieces of art and no one notices that I've died.